So now we're moving to Haya. Um, Haya, according to the UNHCR, the number of registered Syrian refugees is over five million. Can you please tell us a little bit about your work and uh, what would you recommend in terms of refugee integration policies and programs, particularly for young people? Well, um, thank you, Juliana, for the introduction. Thank you, Julian, for the great talk. Um, I really would like to echo on what Julian spoke, of, spoke about, breaking stereotypes of uh, youth inclusion and the role of youth in, uh, in peace building and peacemaking. And here, I would like to take this time to uh, give youth, the youth which are here in the room, examples of how youth can really be engaged in this. And um, first, I'd like to start with um, just giving a very quick uh, glimpse about the Syrian Youth Assembly, uh, which was founded just after the World Humanitarian Summit happened last year in, in, in Istanbul. And everybody knows that the Syrian conflict has been going on for so long now. And for six years, I've been always thinking, like, what can I do for my country? What can I offer for my country? And all of this thinking really didn't give me anything. I just had to take the initiative and to just create something with a group of Syrian friends. And we really created the Syrian Youth Assembly. Uh, we are really uh, hoping to build peace in Syria. We are a peace platform. Uh, we want to engage as much youth as possible. We want to have a say in the 2250 resolution, which we know it's a, it's a really, really challenge right now for the Syrian conflict. And we as youth uh, uh, want to have our voices heard. Uh, especially during the Syria talks that are happening, there is absolutely no representation of youth whatsoever, despite that they are really very much affected by the conflict that's happening uh, in Syria. Um, another thing I would really like to give an example about, which is something I'm also a member of, which is Shark Youth Forum. Uh, it's a very interesting forum that was founded uh, a few years ago, and it really promotes for uh, engagement of the elite, of the youth, of the region, of the Shark region, which really involves the, uh, the civilizations of the uh, Kurdish, Iranian, Persian, and uh, Arabs. And we really have a lot of conflict in our region, and unless the youth of our region really come together and discuss how can we stabilize our region, how can we build bridges, regardless of all that's happening in politics, regardless of all what, you know, there are stereotypes we have about each other, we as youth really had to come together. And there are lots of really successful examples in this forum, whether in the Syrian Youth Assembly or in the Shark Forum, of really the ability of youth to make their voices heard. So, um, and unless we took these, these initiatives, we really weren't able to, uh, uh, to make ourselves really engaged in this and to allow for the youth integration in these important processes. Thank you, Haya. We know that currently uh, Syria is facing a very difficult situation, and particularly for young people and for the, the infants. So uh, we know as well that you, you have a, an academic background and you have been dedicated these years to do some research. Uh, based on that experience, uh, on the living conditions of Syrian refugees in Lebanon. Can you tell us a little bit more about young refugees' mental health and how they cope with post-trauma stress disorder? Well, back when I was studying at the American University of Beirut, uh, my professor told me about a project that she's working on about the uh, effect of PTSD on social and political behavior. Now, PTSD, for those who don't know, is, th is the post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's a mental disorder that some people suffer after experiencing a really traumatic event or a catastrophic event. And um, we, it took us almost three years to finish working on this research because we worked closely with Syrian refugees in Lebanon. They were actually our, our focus of our study. And we wanted to understand the impact of PTSD on, on uh, countries which, which have ongoing conflict and violence. And th from the study, we really discovered that the high prevalence of PTSD among Syrian refugees, which faced uh, displacement, they faced war, and they faced trauma, because we need to keep in mind that Syrian refugees and more specifically Syrian youth not only suffered from trauma or oppression, they also suffered from displace displacement. So throughout these six years, we're just going from trauma to another trauma, oppression and then war and then maybe torture, maybe losing people we love, and then we're just going to displacement, and then in displacement we have discrimination, and just the list just continues. And we really, this, uh, 
found in our results that the PTSD actually may have an impact on the intractability of conflicts. So let's say that the Syrian conflict now is resolved, and, but there's, there might be a possibility that Syria might fall into another conflict again because actually the mental health and the, the possibility of those people falling into conflict is very high because it's not only important to work, to work on you know, physical maintenance or to work on the infrastructure in post-war countries. The human beings really have been hurt a lot. And in this study, we discovered that it's very important to work on the human being and specifically on youth, because they are actually the generation which will go back to Syria to rebuild it. And um, we, we actually recommended in our study that communication is very important. So it's really important, like, let's say now in Syria we have the government side and the rebel side. It's very important to have communication between both sides, because if you do not have communication, there is possibly no peace that can happen because many people are thinking of revenge and we don't really want uh, revenge in our country after the, the war. And one thing we also found out is the ability of resilience. So not all people who are refugees or not all people who have been through trauma will actually develop PTSD. Uh, many people have resilience in the sense that they can adopt to the conflict, adopt to the trauma, they, sorry, they can adapt and after adapting, they can actually succeed in really uh, uh, overcoming the trauma that they faced. So many people really have the ability of resilience, but um, many others really are affected by these, uh, these conflicts. So last thing I have to say, since I have one minute, um, it's very important to help the youth to cope uh, uh, with what's happening around them, because this is the most pertin pertinent way to establish peace. So, Peacemaking is about uh, maybe resolutions and politics, but it's also about helping the human beings and the youth to really cope with their surroundings. Thank you.